what's up guys i am going to be doing a track breakdown for my song road trips which just came out on the chill hop fall essentials compilation and we're also doing a remix contest for this track right now so if you're interested in winning some awesome prizes go check out the link in the description um yeah so let's get into it Okay, so here we are in Ableton and um, yeah, let's just look at how this track is structured. So I've got everything in separate buses. We got guitars, pianos, synths, bass, drums, and FX. And on each of those buses, I've put a little radiator on each one of them. And the reason for that is I'm trying to emulate an analog mix down like workflow. So I was reading the manuals and I noticed that these little radiators are based on a preamp. I think it's an Alltech, but I don't know too much about it. Um, but basically just by putting it on the track, it's getting some of that like analog mixed down like warmth, like a little bit of that like glue that you get out of just mixing on an analog board. But I went one step further and put the big radiator on the master. And the difference is like these are actually emulating different gear. Like the little radiator is a channel, whereas the radiator is a summing amp. So it's, it's designed to like accept a bunch of different channels and turn it into a two track, which is just like a left and right stereo track. That was kind of an interesting workflow and it had me thinking differently as I was creating and mixing this song. But yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about this guitar bus. So on the guitars, like I said, I've got little radiator and just an EQ to kind of help it fit into the mix a little more. Let's check this out real quick. Nice, nice, nice. So we have a bunch of stuff going on here. Let's start with the like guitar group within the guitar bus. This is the main guitar that we have going on. I'll show you this one first. There's that real just like chugging guitar. Um, so we have that track, which is being mixed with this hard left and right, like big open chords. But that is not the only magic going on here. So on this guitar group, we have all these plugins that are changing the stereo image of it. Um, so I'll show you without and then with. So here's without. image is super well defined, right? I'm gonna add these one by one. First we got DAW cassette. Shout out to Clevgrand, you could win some Clevgrand plugins in the remix contest. Um, but in all seriousness, I do love this plugin. Uh, this is giving like a little bit of, uh, a little bit of like, this is like high clarity almost. Like I, I really love what this plugin does to the high end of a guitar. It almost makes it sound like, fake in a way, but in the way that a tape deck does. If you've ever played through a tape deck, you know what I mean. So this is just adding a little bit of that cassette feeling. And then here I've automated the sides of the stereo field so that as the guitar is coming in, as we're introducing the guitar to the listener, we're increasing the amount of stereo width. And that's just kind of like in place of doing a volume automation, we're adding stereo width, which is just like adding more energy. It's kind of like an alternate way of fading something in. So we can check that out real quick. Super mono here, right? It's getting bigger, wider, and then by the time everything comes in, the stereo image is complete and everything sounds big. The, uh, the next thing on the signal chain is altiverb. And um, yeah, even though we have this panning going on before it hits altiverb, the altiverb is going to change the way it sounds significantly because it's being played halfway in a train station in a royal waiting room. If you listen to what this does to the sound, it really like takes you out of the 
left, right, center space, and it puts it in a completely like different three-dimensional space. So check this out. Here's uh, here's before. Then we have just like some basic EQ, boosting at 17, or I guess 1.7K. So that's the guitar group. And then on top of that, we have some like lead. Nothing too special here, except um, we are doubling it at one part. And that's just being sent to a mega verb. So this is panned left, and the mega verb is panned to the right. And I love to do that, so that's a fun thing. Like pan your dry signal one way, pan your wet signal the other way. Nice way to add some width. And that is the guitar bus. So let's move on to the pianos. The pianos are super simple. They're basically just a Nord patch called una corda and um, I've recorded them left and right separately. So we have the main piano, which is this one, and then we have this one is kind of playing off of the main chords. This yellow one is going Call and response is super important. Like any way you can work that into your songwriting is is uh, it's gonna help you a lot. So the piano bus is pretty much done. There's a electric piano that comes in a little later, like towards the end. Um, the drums go half time, and we get a little electric piano. This is just sort of like a chiller moment because the drums are half time. I'll show you that for a sec. And the una corda piano goes away. I hope I'm saying that right. Una corda. So that's pianos and guitars done. Um, I'm gonna skip the synths for a sec because the bass is really cool. Um, the bass, while it is just a patch on my Nord that I made in the synth section, you can make it on any synth. It's uh, here. I'll show you first. It's not overly complicated sounding, but it has that noise that comes through the filter. And I've been doing that a lot lately. I really like the way it sounds and the way it blends in the other instruments in my mix. I'm pretty sure it's just a detuned saw wave. So it's got like two different oscillators, slightly off key, and then low pass filter, and then just a little bit of like noise coming through on like a separate oscillator that doesn't go through the filter. And you get that warm sound because you get that noise coming through. And if you want to do something really fun, you can add a little bit of saturation afterwards and it makes the noise a little fuzzier. It's kind of cool. I'll show you. Yeah, that sounds cool. Okay, um, so that's the bass. I like the bass on this a lot. And I think I'm, I'm playing chords on it, like two notes, so. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, the synths only come in at the middle and the end, and they're just there to give you a little a little respite in the middle of all these intense piano chords. So we've got the fragile sign with MFX 16, and that is referring to the SP404's multi-fx 16, which is vinyl sim and it adds this little gritty high end to it and it adds a little vinyl warble. The fragile sign is just referring to like a sine wave that has about the same envelope as like a piano. So it's kind of piano-like, but it's a sine wave and it's got a little distortion on it. So that's what that sounds like. And some reverb, of course. Um, so yeah, basically just took that sine wave like patch and then ran it through my 404. But the other thing in this synth bus is called NordPad P404FX16, which is a catchy way of saying we've got a little detuned saw wave with a little bit of saturation. And it's mimicking the chords that the piano are playing. So together they sound like this. We've 
got another call and response moment between the piano and this fragile sign. So if you listen to this, we got a little. Here's the response. Here's the call. There's the response. The Nord pad is just filling in like a little width. I kind of think of it as width more than actually doing the whatever a pad does. Like it's like width and texture because you don't notice it too much when you hear it in the whole mix. Um, so that's my synth bus. Let's look at the drums. So we have three tracks here. We got drums, which is most of the drums here. We have high snare, which is just like a high frequency layer to put on top of the snare because it was sounding a little dull. And then we have the Foley rack, which is a selection of recordings that I have made over the years of random things like birds chirping, rocks hitting pavement, peeling like a little floaty thing, um, chalk tapping on concrete, receipts, just all sorts of random stuff and there's a filter so I can get it to sound just right. But I played those recordings rhythmically and I've layered that under the entire song. So they fit with the drums if you listen here. So it just adds a little bit of like unpredictability. Like I find drum samples to be just a little too dry sometimes that it's nice to add anything, just anything random. Like honestly, even just putting a mic up while you, <laughs> while you play the drum pads, like get the thumping in there. Like it, anything helps to liven up drum samples. Um, so that's basically what I was doing there. The high snare sounds like this just EQ'd so that it's not allowing anything to interfere with the actual snare drum, which sounds like this. Um, it just didn't really have enough high end, so here it is. Yeah, it just really, it helps it cut through the mix a little bit better. Um, other than that, I mean, there isn't really anything on the drums that is worth talking about. Here's my kick drum EQ, and then we have hi-hat, you know, really nothing to speak of, but <laughs> I didn't even EQ the ride, that's interesting. Um, the last thing is I've layered just like a tape hiss throughout the entire song, and then a couple little white noise splash moments, and that is all of the different tracks that we have. Um, we also have a bit of a drum reverb. We have the guitar spring reverb and we have the lead reverb that I talked about a little bit earlier. So other than that, on the master track, we have an interesting thing going on. I definitely get some people raising eyebrows at the things I put on my master chain, but I say make it weirder like it's not that crazy to put like three different compressors on the master I think if you know why you're doing it, it's totally Legit, so I'll tell you why I'm doing it. Let's start with I'm gonna leave that cuz it's just some automation stuff Let's start with a glue compressor when I mix this like in the release you're listening to the smart c1la compressor um, it's like a bus compressor, but it's very similar to the glue compressor. So I just use this because I'm talking through the other one. Anyways, um, so here's the glue compressor and it's just giving it a gentle squeeze before it goes into what I call a character compressor, which is just like a compressor that like adds some sort of unique flair to it. It's more of like an effect than like a utility. So this is a utility. And then here's without. So it's, it's really just grabbing that kick in the snare peak and just bringing it down towards the instruments a little bit, just a little four to one ratio. But I find when you use something more extreme like the Wolf compressor, it helps to tame those transients a little bit before it goes into the Wolf compressor or like a 404 compressor or something. So here is the glue compressor with the Wolf compressor. Here's 
Cheers with that. So I, I purposefully mix the kick and the snare like a little bit loud because I know I'm going to hit it with a few different compressors in the master. But that is so that I can get that kind of like that rhythmic effect that you get from layering compression. Or like when I used to record only on an SP404, I would have to slam the kick in the snare because that compressor was so extreme that I would get no transient out of the kick in the snare unless it was crazy loud before I sent it to the compressor. So that's what I'm doing here, basically. So here's again, without and then with. But it doesn't sound extreme. Um, so now I'm adding that uh, summing amp here. It's adding some volume, which obviously is gonna make it sound better, but it's doing a little bit of bass and treble too. And whatever magic the radiator summing amp does, which is honestly probably like, I don't know, boosting the mids a little bit, adding a little saturation. But I tried to let the heat hit at about zero. So um, Next we've added Gull Foss, and that's just to tame whatever needs taming. Sometimes I get to a point in a mix where it's like, something needs to change and I don't exactly know what it is. If I put Gull Foss on the master and start turning up the like tame switch, it usually tells me what's wrong with it. So I looked at this, probably a little too much low mid and not enough high end. And that sounds about right for the way I mix. So I left it on there. It sounds pretty great. So here's without and here's with. And yeah, we're adding volume here. So yeah, it sounds better, but um, I really like the way that the kick and the snare have been glued to the instruments where they, they weren't really before. So the last thing on here is the decapitator. And it is just like a, I think of it kind of like the radiator where it's like a last step, like, like a bus saturation, just like glue, just to run everything through the same box, have it all get suctioned together. So here's without the decapitator. Here's with. I think I appreciate how it sets sort of like a hard limit on how loud things could get, and it gives me a bit of a reference to how much I've turned things up. Um, like if my kick is too loud, it's gonna be saturating, and so I know that it's too loud. It kind of helps you hear the relation between all the different instruments you have. And then the last thing here is just tilt shift, which is just doing a little bit of automation. I think like here, maybe towards the end, maybe towards the beginning. Oh, maybe it's in the middle. Yeah, here, I've just, I've just added like a little bit of a high pass filter in the middle just to uh, make it a little chiller here. Um, so that's the song Road Trips. And if you are watching this in October, 2023, you should definitely download these stems and remix it because you could win like a thousand dollars and like get some plugins and chill hop merch so the link to the contest is right here um and uh if you enter it send me like a message or something because i just want to listen to all the all the remixes that i can i'm really excited to hear this and yeah other than that like if you want to hear another song of mine like a breakdown or anything else on my channel drop a comment or whatever Send me a message because I want to start making some more videos again. One last thing, I made a website that lets you mix the stems for road trips all on your web browser. So if you head over to arbor.social and then you click the first link for Arbor Console, it'll take you to the page that I made that you can, you know, turn up the piano, turn up the bass, the drums, whatever you want, make your own mix. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was just a cool tool for you to explore some of my mixing a little bit. So let me know what you think of that as well. And uh, maybe I'll make some more. That is truly all. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.